been fun redecorating the porch, you know, and getting it designed so that I can enjoy the weather and the growth and everything that's happening, you know, that I can keep redesigning and redeveloping and seeing the plants bloom and the tulips coming up and boy, it just, it's been awesome, you know, and this morning it was funny because I was coming out here and I was cranking along getting all these pieces of information done, you know, that I present on the web or some of the devotionals, the videos done and some other comments and commentary and things written and things done and then I kind of took a moment, you know, and I said, well, I need to get cleaned up, you know, <laughs> I need to spend some time on me. So usually when I take a bath, you know, take my devotional, take a Bible and kick back and relax and just kind of you know, spend some time reading and, you know, talking to God and seeing if he wants to talk to me. So I got in the tub and I'm kind of like, got my Bible, you know, on the edge of the tub and sitting there and just slowly sipping into that hot water and letting my knees kind of soak it in and <sighs> my back relax. And suddenly I hear Noah. You ready? It's the Lord, Noah. Right! Now that's a Bill Cosby routine. <laughs> if you don't know it, but Bill Cosby did a routine about Noah. And it's actually a really good routine because it's humorous, it's funny. But you kind of, kind of like me and God in a way, you know, kind of like, well, we kind of have this thing going. But anyways, no, I was laying back in the tub, you know, and as usual, you know, I got this word, you know, and it's kind of, it's kind of neat because the Lord said, it's not about religion. And so I went, Lord? Because I was thinking, that don't sound like God. <laughs> not the way you've been talking to me. <laughs> so he goes, it's about relationship. And I went, it almost sounds like me. And so I kind of went, waited, you know, and I was thinking about it for a minute. And okay, you know, I said, yeah, there's a lot of things on there. But I said, you know, I don't, I'm not really comfortable with that, you know. And so I, I actually went ahead and said, you know, Lord, I'm not real comfortable with that statement. And he said, it is about religion. And then I went, and I know better. Because <laughs> as soon as I hear something like that, I'm kind of going, uh-oh. If I say anything, I know I'm going to stick my foot in it, so I'm going to wait and see what he has to say. And then he said, it is about relationship. And I went, yeah, I get it. It is about religion. It is about relationship. So, about that time, my flesh started saying, man, I was all ready to soak and cope and, you know, just enjoy this floating in the water kind of relaxing and reading and spending some quiet time, you know, and doing nothing. Now I gotta get up, get dressed, get out, get going, and go record that. Because if I don't, you know what, I'll forget all about it. Doggone it, I wish God wouldn't talk to me. Well, maybe I thought it, I didn't say it. <laughs> I'm not that dumb, but I am that selfish. <laughs> Sometimes I'm more interested in what I'm not doing than I am what I'm doing. You know, it's kind of like, you know, it's like, man, how come every time I come in the bathroom I can't get any peace of quiet? <laughs> I'd rather he keeps going the way he does than do what I do, which is, you know, such as I am, here I am. And so, the Lord today had me stop, and we're calling this religiosity, where we want to begin to broach some of these popular, what we, I used to know they were called truisms, you know, like penny saved is penny earned, you know, statements that you hear from nowadays, advertising, you know, an advertising dollar goes a long ways because they come up with these expressions, you know, like, oh, I don't know, um, I was trying to think of a commercial, you know, the commercials, that's where we get those famous expressions from, like, you know, um, uh-oh, SpaghettiOs, you know, I mean, or, oh no, Mr. Bill, you know, or now we have new ones where we invent them ourselves and then commercials catch up with it, like T-Bowling, <laughs> you know, T-Bowling, praying, you know, T-Bowling, or I think the latest is something to do with Jolie or Jolene or Angelina Jolie at the Oscars or something, but anyways, my point being is that in religious world, we also have these expressions and statements and things that aren't scripture,
but sometimes take on a life of their own and are being used to be portrayed as accurately as Scripture. You know, like, God won't give you anything bigger than you can handle, you know. Um, if He closes one door, He's got something better for you in store. <laughs> or, boy, I mean, the list goes on. And, you know, I decided, you know what? After God said, it is about religion, and it is about relationship, because of that expression that says, it isn't about religion, it's about relationship, that all of my angst whenever I read these things and sometimes make comments on them and then I get in trouble because especially on Facebook when I make a comment somebody thinks I'm being critical of them you know you're being critical of me how dare you judge me you know what are you trying to say and I'm just saying I'm not critical of you I'm just saying that this statement's wrong you know? no God will give you something bigger than you can handle because he said he'll give you a way to escape so that you'll be able to bear it so that you can go out around it you know I mean come on now let's quote the scripture the way it is or they'll quote one part of the scripture and they'll say 43a and leave out the rest that really had to do with what you need to do uh, excuse me you need to have the entire part so in religiosity we want to begin to sit down and just look at the topic you know whatever it may be it'll be in quotes and that's what we're going to talk about you know the distortion and contortion of taking something that's called a truism meaning it isn't true and trying to make it fit into theology or make it fit into your personal life as a Christian. Because we're not like the world and the world isn't like us. We don't go by power, positive thinking, you know, coaching, e-coaches or whatever to get your self-esteem up when you're supposed to deny yourself, you know. Pardon me, but, you know, if you got a poor self-esteem, you're probably on the right track, you know. And this self-esteem, you know, I'm glad that God died for it because I'd rather be crucified so I can get on with the real scheme that God schemes me as being, you know, which is the Son of God. But as far as my self-esteem, I'd rather crucify that sucker because I know who he is. <laughs> he was deceitful and wicked and perverse above all things, you know. Or that's my heart. Oh, well. So you see, in dealing with religiosity now, we have to talk about this first part, which is probably the biggest one. It is about religion because religion brings you to a relationship with God. Without having religion in place, you would never come to a relationship because you wouldn't do what right now people are popular in doing. You know, admit that you're a sinner and ask God to forgive you of your sins and recognize that Jesus died for your sins and that, you know, all your sins have been taken upon him. You know, he's the sacrifice, propitiation of your sins and that, you know, the sanctification process is going to begin and you need to develop a relationship with him so that way you know that you're saved and that way you can go on and everybody who wants to criticize you about the way that you made your life is going to be challenged because you're actually born of the Spirit and the Spirit's going to take over and he's going to start to teach you and then he's going to instruct you in righteousness so that you go ahead and go forward and you become one of those types of people that are religious now and even though they won't admit that they're religious they're really having a relationship with God but they're actually exercising a religion. You see, it is religion. <laughs> it's just, to describe it, you know, they want to make these cute little statements in order to cover it. So, if you have a relationship, it leads you to religion, to practice that relationship. And relationship develops through religious practice. So you see, it's both. You can't have one without the other. A relationship without a religion, in other words, if you're not going to get up in the morning and do something consistently, guess what? Your relationship sucks. <laughs> there are things you do religiously. James said that perfect religion is this, that you take care of the widows and orphans, and that you you know, basically provide for those that are in need. I mean, it's going to come up with another word that people have blown out of proportion, and that's socialism. Because they're afraid to admit that Jesus wants you to take care of your neighbor, and your first of all, your own self, and then your wife, you know, and your kids, which, by the way, we're already failing in that department, so... <laughs> ah. And then you want to reach out to the people around you, you know, take care of them because, am I my brother's keeper? And Jesus said, hey, look, if your neighbor comes to you and asks for you a loaf of bread, will you give him a stone? Well, we're now we don't even know who our neighbors are. So, you see, there's a lot of things that people are trying to label as socialism that isn't. It's actually being what Jesus said. And that's why we want to start talking about religion and relationship. Having a relationship with Jesus should be instructing you in how to exercise a religion that is acceptable in God's eyes, not something that's a religious practice, that's just a tradition. And that's usually where people get into the discrepancy. When they go into religion only without relationship, then they want to come up with rules, regulations, and dogmas, and doctrines, and all these other things that are theologically presented in order to accomplish a purpose that they designed for. And if you look at each one, they have a purpose, and they're designed for a specific reason. 
So if you know the reason, you know what it's for, and you can either do it or don't do it by your own choice. But if you put relationship into it, then you can take whatever religion it is, you know, meaning that it's a Christian religion, but also into Baptist or, or Baptist or Lutheran or Protestant or Catholic or Methodist or whatever, not fundamentalist or whatever you want to be, non-denominational or messianic or some other thing. Oy, yeah, it gets me crazy after a while. But you can take whatever that is and then put relationship in it and guess what? Then you have something because then you can ask God about it and God can tell you where to go, what to do, and how to say what to be. You see what I mean? And if you have a relationship, he's going to put you in a place so that you could be salt and be light because that's what you're supposed to be. Salt of the earth, light of the earth. You're preserving things and you're showing and revealing things. Not telling people, but just by the very fact that you are a light shining in the darkness, meaning you're full of joy, peace, love, you just kind of temper, gentleness, all that good stuff. So, on the one hand, yes, you must have a relationship. And on the other hand, yes, you must have a religion. Because otherwise, you're like, pardon me, but either a paraplegic or a quadriplegic. You're cutting off all the parts of the body that you need. Because there's more than just, you know, religion and relationship, but we're not going to get into that. Right now, we'll just stick with that. It is, repeat after me, <laughs> you know, if you've already agreed with me, then we can cut this short. It is about religion. It is about relationship in Jesus. It is a religion in Jesus. It is a relationship in Jesus. Jesus didn't come to destroy religion. I'm sorry. He observed that which was honoring and exalting people and directing them to God. He challenged the religious leaders, but not the religion itself. He challenged that to bring me into the relationship with God because he said, if you had known my father, if you had known he who sent me, you don't know who your father is, but I know who my father is. And I do those things in my relationship that I see him doing. And God the Father is the one who set forth what he wanted in religion. Now let's don't get into Shabbat and all this other stuff and Sabbath keeping and Sabbath breaking and all this stupid stuff because that's all into the religion part. In your religion, take it to relationship and then say, okay, I'm walking along one legged, now let me add the other leg and see if Jesus is in it. Because if Jesus wants me to do it, then I'm walking with two legs. See what I mean? In other words, what you're doing when you're walking with God has to be a balance of one foot after the other. You have to put your relationship and your religion together. Combine the two. You put one foot forward, like say you want to do something, oh I don't know, say you want to daven, you know, <laughs> you want to pray by bobbing your head up and down. So you go, okay Lord, you know, um, I, I found out about this new kind of thing, it's called davening, you know, and they, they bob their heads up and forth, you know, and then they bob and weave to the left and the right. You want me to do it? You see what I mean? The religion says davening. The relationship says, now take it to the Lord and ask him. And the Lord says, no, you're not Jewish, don't do it. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Well, then you move on. See how that works? It's two parts. Now, there's more parts, but in that very expression, I want you to recognize it. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. No, you can't have one without the other, or you're a one-legged man walking around trying to do something that you were intended to have two legs for. You can try to improvise, you know, but you're not going to be as effective as God designed you to be. And that's the thing. Everything that God designed for us fits perfectly into Scripture. It is already written. God does honor, have, and put in place religion for us to benefit. It's supposed to develop us in our relationship. And our relationship develop a, develops us in our religion. Do you get it? There is no separation. Pardon me, but that's kind of like saying separation church and state. It's kind of hard to do that because, frankly, it doesn't happen ever. The church is in the person, so the person is in the state, and the state is in the person, or the person's in the state, so guess what? One way or another, they're both together. So some of this stupid stuff, while it sounds like a good idea on the surface, scratch it and it doesn't bleed because it's got this whole big bunch of junk under it that doesn't mean anything at all. It was humanism. It's not about religion, it's about relationship. It's a humanistic statement. It is about self-revelation. It is a deceptive statement. You may not have realized this yet, but if you extended that outward, then if it's not about religion, it's about relationship, you can make relationship into being anti-religion. And it's not. Now, some people out there think it is because they want to push away from things they don't like. 
Like if they're a Protestant, they don't like Catholics. If they're a Catholic, they don't like Protestants necessarily. I'm not going to say that's true of everyone, but some people, you know, that's why they conflict. Because they don't want to be like them, so they say, well, then we don't want any religion, and so they go like them. Who says, we don't want any religion, we want to be fundamentally sound. Well, wait a minute, if you're fundamentalist, that's a religious statement. So how could you have a relationship if you're a fundamentalist? Because you're just talking about being a religion. See how that's stupid? That's what's dumb, and that's why God finally said to me, you know, Michael, the emperor has new clothes. And I said, yeah, I know, they're walking around naked in their own theology. <laughs> in other words, you don't, have, you don't have a leg to stand on. You can't say the statement, it's not about religion. I'm sorry, it is. And you can't say the statement, it's not about relationship. I'm sorry, it is. It's about both. You can't do one without the other. It doesn't work. Because as soon as you start one, you have the other. How do you approach God? Religiously. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, something had to cause it. It's not just relationship. I'm sorry. But in religion, also, you can't just do it without relationship because you're failing in what religion is meant to do. Bring it to him. So you see, the right hand washes the left and the left hand washes the right. Or, to put it another way, it's a two-handed sword so you have to have both hands on the hilt, or it's a two-handed job, or you know you got two feet, so you got to have two legs with it. You know, I mean, it just kind of you know goes together. You know, it's like you know I don't know even what more to say about it except that quit being so dogmatic that you're making dogma out of what you think is doctrine, which isn't a scripture, and then you're making it into something it's not, which really is just a carnal, fleshy assertion of a humanistic philosophical statement that has been inserted into Christianity and now has become a humanistic <laughs> failure. In other words, it's just dumb when you get into logic. It doesn't work. Now there's all kinds of videos out there I'm going to tell you about. They'll tell you that they're not about religion, they're about relationship. And yet, as soon as they give you a relationship, they're talking about religion right afterwards. You need to read your Bible. Oh, that's not about religion. Okay, then throw the Bible out. If it's only about relationship, throw the Bible out. You don't need it. If it's only about relationship, throw out prayer. Throw out hmm, anything except hearing God direct. So, walk around. Don't go to a church. Don't pray. Don't read your Bible. Don't do anything that's religious and see how far you get. You know, just walking along with God and talking to the, the birds and the bees and the skies and the seas, you know, and see how much God's going to spend some time with you. And don't do anything that's already put into religion, but only do what you think is in relationship only, which is basically, you know, you figure it out. Because it doesn't take a genius very long to see how poor that relationship is without religion. Now, you could do the opposite and I'd like to get into explaining all of it, but you already know what religion is like without relationship. You can look around at a lot of dead churches and say, yeah, I can see that because they're making up these sermons and topics about how to live your life, but they never mention God in it. <laughs> you know, God doesn't intervene in it because it's not anything to do with Him. And that's where religion fails if it's not combined with relationship. So I hope we've mentioned this enough times so that you can start saying to yourself, it is about religion. Let's try that three times. One, it is about religion. Two, it is about religion. Three, you better start. It is about religion. Now let's do it three times with relationship. It is about relationship. It is about relationship. It is about relationship. Now you can say this if you want to, and this is just the freebie I'll throw in. It is about Jesus. It is about Jesus. It is about Jesus. Hopefully, in this series of religiosity, you begin to see how things are getting blown out of proportion, and maybe you say it's not that bad a deal, but I deal with this every day. And there are people that really do think that they can get away with no religion and only relationship or all religion and no relationship. 
you got to address it and you got to be real. And if you talk to God about it in your religious life, in praying, then I think you'll find today that through religiosity, we can find a way where we know the truth and the truth sets us free. Because that's what Jesus came to do. He's not binding a yoke upon us of religion. And he's not setting us free to be blown by the wind, you know, as though we were just dust in the wind or tossed to and fro on the ocean like with every women doctrine that comes along. But rather, he wants us to have the balance, to be what we were created to be, with two hands, two feet, a mind, a heart, a soul, a body, and a spirit, so that you would walk, talk, and be his example. And he was religious, and he had a relationship with his father.